fingerboard geography. So I know a lot of you want to develop a better understanding of the fingerboard. That's why today I want to share something with you. It's what I call a scale walk up. It's in kind of a little exercise I actually designed for myself. And in my experience, it was more helpful than plain scales and even plain arpeggios was. I've kind of arranged this as a piece of sheet music so that you can follow along. Um, and it's got, you know, all the fingerings and the positions and a couple uh, extra bowings and patterns you can work on. And if you want, you go ahead, there's a link below in the comment section, and you can go ahead and download that for your own personal practice. So in case you don't know who I am, I'm Billy Tabankin uh, from adultcello.com. I started the cello at age 25 from scratch, and now I'm here to help other adults who, like me, found the cello later in life. So if you do find this video helpful, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, so let's dive into this scale walk up I'm gonna share with you and kind of what it's all about. I developed it because I was doing scales and arpeggios, but what I found was often, if I was assigned a piece in a key that I was not as familiar with, I felt completely at sea. I started thinking about it and at least the way I was learning scales, the way I was working on them, I basically would carve out a single path kind of up this little mountain. Let's say I'm doing a D major scale. I always did, you know, with the open strings and I always played the same exact notes going up and down, but I never actually touch any of those like up high, higher up on the G string or the C string. I wasn't touching those when I was playing my scales. So there were whole sections of the fingerboard that still felt foreign to me, even with scalar work. So that's why I developed this walk up in part. The other part was I found that it really helped me start to understand how certain keys lay on the fingerboard in terms of hand position. So what this walk up is, I, for today I picked a G major, but it can be any key. Basically start on the C string and then you play three notes of the scale, whatever the next note is. So since we're in G major, I'm gonna play the open C because that's part of a G major scale. We play C, D, E, D, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, G, etc. as I'll show. And as you're doing that and shifting, you start to see how G major sits on the cello's fingerboard in terms of hand positions. So we'll see that we have, you know, on the D and the A string, we have some third position with extension. You have some first position. You know, we don't really, in G major, we're not really gonna get into any half position, for example. That's very much a different case with a different key. For example, E flat, you're now reaching back on the D string and the A string for the E flat and the B flat. So it, you can start to picture certain keys with certain sets of hand shapes. And I found that incredibly helpful when I'm working on pieces of repertoire and incredibly helpful when I started sight reading. Because then you just got to grab as many notes as possible. So if you know basically, okay, I'm in E major, I'm going to sit around second position frequently, I'll go to half position sometimes, you know, stuff like that, that really helps for when you're just trying to grab notes as fast as possible. Let's get started. First off, a warning, because we're going, um, up the C string and we're on a G major scale, you're gonna hear an F sharp and it sounds at first like we're playing the beginning of a C major scale, so it's gonna sound a little funky, but just remember, we're playing all the notes that occur within G major. So we're not gonna play F natural, we're gonna play F sharp. I'm gonna walk through basically explaining how this walk up works and what positions we're gonna find ourselves in, okay? So we start off with the open C string in first position. Okay, and I did 013, you could also do 012 because the next set of notes is D, E, F sharp, and that's extension, first position. That sounds weird already, I know, but remember, we're in G major, that's why you played F sharp. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, first finger onto E, okay? So each time we shift, we're, it's one, two, four, one, three, four, it's always shifting on one. Okay, there we go. That's second position, one, three, four on the E natural. Now we're gonna go to upper third position for F sharp G A. Okay, now you could continue up the C string and that's something I would do, but that's 
A little more advanced, you get into kind of thumb position and you know, kind of over the hump. So we're gonna stop at basically fourth position. So now we're gonna go over to the open G string. First position. Okay, now we'll stay here. We'll play one, three, four. Um, first position again. Okay, now second position, first finger on B. Okay, then a little half step shift and we're gonna go into extension for C, D, E natural. Again, we could continue up the G string, but because we're ready to play the open D, we're gonna go now onto the D string. Okay, stay in first position. Okay, second position again. Okay, and again, half step up with an extension for third, third position extension, G, A natural, B. Now for A natural, instead of staying on the D string, we'll go to the A string. Okay, stay in first position. Okay, now half step up and we're playing the C natural, so it's a basically lower second position or second position with an extension. Okay, now stay in that extended hand shape for D, E, F sharp. And finishing off, we'll be in fourth position, first finger on E for E, F sharp, G. Okay, so that's a lot. <laughs> but you start to notice that you get recurring hand shapes. So you get on the, for example, these two middle strings, if I was doing this walk up, here's what I'm thinking about. Those mirror each other, the same, same fingering, same hand position. You start to see a pattern here for G major. So just to be so clear, this is for G major. So when you do the same kind of exercise with a different scale, you're gonna find different patterns. So you can't just plug what you found out today on G major into A flat major. It's gonna to be a totally different set of patterns. But you'll start to notice that certain keys are related in terms of how they sit on the fingerboard. This was, my mind like exploded when I started doing this with different keys, because like, oh, this is wonderful. It really kind of maps everything out. Okay, so now, um, I'll talk about the other thing I included here which is basically some uh, Boeing options. What I would suggest is go ahead and do this, maybe, I don't know, uh, 60 on the metronome. Um, you, and then you can slowly speed it up, okay? And as you speed it up, you're gonna find that you're, you'll want to shift, and when you shift, you wanna think about the hand position you're going to, not just, okay, I just played C, D, E natural, okay, D, E natural, F sharp, okay, now I need this E to be this E. That's the part where you can help with intonation because you hopefully are gonna have the same E natural each time, the same F sharp, for example. But you wanna move your entire hand as like a block into the new hand position and whether it's a closed hand shape or an open hand shape, that's something you can kind of work in so that as you speed up, it's bum, 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 you know, whatever it is, whether it's closed or open, you just, boom, you kind of open up preemptively because if the notes are happening quickly, you don't have time to, okay, let me open up, you know, slowly for this hand shape. Here are the alternatives. So we basically, what I mapped out, I started down bow each time, but if we were doing this, I'll put the metronome on. The first way would be just to go ahead and do separate bows. So, etc. Okay. The second option I give um, as an alternative would be a three-note slur. So we're still doing quarter notes. So now we're gonna have to play. We're gonna have to time our bow up to be a little slower. So it'd be etc. Uh, 
But then the next option I have is two notes slurred and then one uh, separate. So this is an uneven bow distribution, so you have to think about that to make sure that you don't end up going further and further out and ending up at the tip. So. All right, so for the next two, the final two variations, they're going to be in 2-4. I went ahead and I put the quarter note, we were at 60, I put it down to 45, okay, because uh, this next version we have quarter note and then two ace, okay, so that's a little bit of bow distribution work you can work on. So here we go. Okay, so that is a uh, really good work because you now have two short notes right before the shift so you have to really clean your shift up if it feels sluggish at all and then finally we're going to have eighth note triplets so we're still we still have the same beat but now we're fitting three notes one two three one two three one so it's going to be and it's and we're slurring six notes so it'd be At the end of the day, you could do any kind of pattern. You could do different rhythms. The sky's the limit. The main thing is to cover the, all the notes of G major in, a, in kind of every possible hand shape on each string. I think if you do that, especially if you just started a piece in, an, in a foreign key, you are going to be so thrilled with how much more solid you feel when you find yourself constantly, let's say, in lower second position and you don't normally go there because you'll be covering it if you do this kind of walk up. So just to summarize what this walk up is going to do for you, it's going to help you with your intonation, it's going to help with your shifting, it's going to help with your fingerboard knowledge specific to different keys, and finally it's going to help your sight reading in a major way. Um, and the other bonus about the fingerboard knowledge is that it will also help you learn pieces more quickly. All right, I hope that helps. I hope you really benefit from this as much as I did, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much.